Okay, finally, folks, and we've already learned this one. Uh, te with a verb can be used as a uh, as kind of a sentence stretcher. Okay, and so when you first came here, you were learning nimas, right? And then we learned nita. And now if we want to link that verb with a further part, a further phrase, we'd say blank mite. Or if we want to make a command, mite kudasai. Mite, mite, look, look, okay? And so that's basically all 14.5 is doing. So let's see, Ken-san, he goes, kore kara nani ga arimasu ka? What's going on for now? Emi-san, ichiji kara? Eigo no jugyo ga arimasu. Ichiji kara? Eigo no jugyo ga arimasu. So they're studying English from now on, or from one o'clock. Ken says, Boku wa ima toshokan e itte. Toshokan i, toshokan e itte. Shukudai. So, Toshokan, sorry, excuse me. Toshokan ni e, sorry, Toshokan e itte. He's going to go to the library. Shukudai o shimasu. He's going to do homework. Ja, mata, ata de ne. And then, of course, Emi with the refined answer. Bye bye. So, that's all they're doing is they're just teaching the linking of te. And uh, number one in there, ja, mata, ato de. Ato de. See you later. Ato de. Ato de. Later. See you later. Ja, mata ato de. Bye bye. Kore kara, sore kara. So those are two important ones. Kore kara, from now. Sore kara, from then. Then, Oops. from then, and that's pretty much it. So your homework. Oh, let's go ahead and go over show you and miso. So show you, of course, is soybean oil. Oh, that's not soybean oil. It's soy sauce. It's just basically squeezed. Um, soybeans and it is I think there's a, a quite a bit of salt in it too it's got that yeah, well, I mean you all know you've been to sushi places before miso on the other hand is like almost kind of a paste that's been grinded up and malted and miso is used I mean, if you go to Hatoya or wherever you'll see containers of miso it's used in so many things that are stewed or boiled. It just gives it this kind of good taste. Um, and you can store miso for quite a long time. Um, the other thing that you can do, I wonder if they have it. No. But uh, shoyu and miso, very common uses for soybeans. That's why uh, soybeans are used so much in the East. Also, you got natto, which is uh, fermented beans, which I absolutely hate and cannot stand, but my, my wife and children will seem to love them. Um, let's see, but Japanese, they use soybeans quite a bit, and it's, I don't know how to explain it, but as a Westerner, you, you have a certain, your gastrological routine is such that when you move to Japan, you suddenly have to deal with this huge change in cuisine. And I remember it affected me, and I knew Japanese cuisine, but I just got really tired of just eating kind of Japanese food. And after a while, your body just cries out like, you know, give me some pasta with some, with some Parmesan on top of it and some tomato sauce and just give me something normal. And um, I don't know, it's just very different. Okay, so your homework, uh, let's see, interview your partner and ask what he or she has done today since getting in the morning. So just give your own example, and that's on page 307. And I'm going to skip the review questions and go next week straight on to 15. By the way, folks, there will be no final exam. So um, 
your final grade for R7, R8, R7, is going to be dependent on how much you turn in. And I'm just going to look through your whole history. Look through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. See what you did as you went through. Make sure that you turn it in. Add it up in power school. Boom. Uh, next week, we're going to do R15. Or, sorry, chapter 15. And I might spend... I might spend a completely optional week of just teaching Japanese history. And from, like I said, the Yayoi period, I mean, seeing it, if you want to get the information yourself so that you don't seem stupid going on to college or whatever, you'll be able to speak a, a little, with some, a little understanding about uh, where the Japanese came from, the major wars and conflicts like, for example, um, the fight between the Minamoto and the Taira, Onin no Dan, uh, the Sengoku Jidai, or the Warring States period, and the three main men of the Sengoku Jidai, uh, Takeda Shingen, uh, Oda no Nobunaga, and um, what's his name? <laughs> Something Ieyasu. I don't remember his name for a second. Oh, Tokugawa Ieyasu. And then why, you know, basically from the 1500s all the way to the 1800s, why Japan was a peaceful state in which samurai were basically uh, elevated office workers living in Tokyo, you know, and just stuff like that, all the way up to the Meiji Restoration. So I'll probably spend about six or seven days doing that and just talk for about 15 minutes about history. But we're done for the week. This should be Thursday. Do Friday. You're done. Have a wonderful weekend. Go out. Jump. Uh, maybe skip, if it works. And enjoy this wonderful time that we've been given. See you later.